Mega top tip. Yeah. There's no undo. Yeah. Welcome back to Piano Book. I've been working on this uh, air piano that we sampled in the film linked above. And I'm starting to program it into EXS24 and I thought, this is ridiculous. So I took action. So I thought I'd ask these two geniuses from Spitfire HQ to give us a quick tutorial on how we go about doing this. So this is John Joe. And this is Leo, both uh, amazing people who work at uh, Spitfire Audio. And it's just kind of ridiculous after 11 years of w working, being part of a company that releases contact samples, I've never, well, I'm just lazy, I've never bothered to learn contacts. I'm such an EXS fan. And with Piano Book, it's just getting beyond ridiculous. So I'm hoping, if possible, you could show me how to make a piano sample in contact. So I thought it'd be fun, actually, for John Joe and Leo just to kind of take over and uh, uh, show us how it's done. Now, for those of you who've already made a contact version of this piano or other pianos, uh, we're going to do the spring piano today. It may be worth watching how John Joe and Leo approach it because these guys are true pros. So if it's okay, I'll just let you guys go on with it. Brilliant. Right. Uh, so here we have all the samples uh, of the spring piano. We can see here we've got two dynamic layers, MP and PP. John Joe's gonna grab one dynamic layer first and then he's gonna drag them into a new contact instrument. And you do that by double clicking. Double nice click. and easy. Call it something like spring piano. And then by opening the spanner, you get all of the things inside contact. The one you want to look at right now is the mapping editor. And this is where you're going to drag all your samples in. Uh, there you go. Uh, they're currently all over the place, and that's not where we want them to be. So we're going to use a special tool inside special contact. Special tool. Here we go. So this is automap setup. Click that there, and then we've got a few options here. It's looked at the name and worked out what different bits of information we've written in the file name. And at the end here, you can see it says A sharp five in this example, and we're gonna use that to make it the low key. Apply that, and it jumps all of the files to be in the position where the note name is written. Then we're also gonna make it a high key, make high key and apply. So that's made all of them a semitone large, right? Next step is batch tools and we want to move the root key to the centre. It doesn't pitch shift it, essentially. It says that if it's on C0, then it is a C0, and you should play it at the normal speed. OK, uh, so it's looking at the sample name, seeing yeah. that it's got C0 or A sharp 5 in it, and then moving it to there in yeah. context, yeah? Yeah, and also okay. then making sure that the playback is at the same speed. It's not pitch shifting it. Yes, otherwise you'd end up with C minus 2, maybe. <laughs> on every, well, most things. Everything will think it's C3. And then we obviously want all the notes to play in between the parts where we haven't sampled. Exactly, so at the moment, if we play from C0, we get something, but nothing in between. That's not good. Not good. So we want to stretch it out automatically using this little button. So I'm just going to make sure that the ranges are right. At the moment, it's gone all the way down to the very bottom, subsonic, and then also dog frequencies at the top. So we're just going to drag that down and stop at the top of the piano and at the bottom at a minus one. Next, we're gonna do the velocity ranges. Uh, so this, because we have two dynamics, obviously we want to have the top dynamic playing when we hit the keyboard harder, and then we want the softer dynamic when we hit it softer. Yeah. And at the minute we've only got one in there, but this one is the louder one, right? Yeah. So we're gonna louder. set it so that it's only played when we Bash the keyboard. Exactly. So we'll set the velocity range. At the moment it goes from 1 to 127, which is the full range. So we'll choose the top half, which is 64 to 127. And hit that, and it all moves up. Lovely. So next we're going to add in the other dynamic and then put that into the bottom half. Yeah, so this is the PP layer now selected. Drag it in, and then same as before. With it all selected, bearing in mind. There we go. I'm going to go to Edit, Auto Map Setup again. Same here, we can see G0 here. We'll make that the high key for that example, and then make it the low key as well. 
back to semitones. And now, because this is the lower dynamic, we need to set the velocity down to 63. And then from there, we want to spread them out again. If we were to try and spread them out before we'd moved them down, it will be unresponsive. It won't work. It won't work. It won't no. work at all. Okay, so let's drag these up to a minus one and these down to the top of the piano. So we've put both of our dynamics in and the next thing we're going to do is set the ADSRs. Yeah, and that's going to stop any horrible clicks and pops. It's going to control the volume of the sample over its duration that you hold it down for. Um, so at the moment our attack is set to zero milliseconds. That's going to be very clicky. So we're going to add a little bit of a fade in. Like that five milliseconds. The curve is kind of convex at the moment. We want to kind of be sympathetic in, to the shape of the piano's note and have a similar shape. So we're going to add that, make that about 40. And there it goes the opposite of convex. Concave. We need to set the start points. We do need to set the start yeah. points. Yeah, that wasn't on our list. If we have a look at one of these samples, I've selected everything here, but at the moment this one highlighted is the one that we're viewing in the wave editor. I'm just going to zoom in vertically and we can see here we've got the note starting here but this green s that's our start point and it's not in the same place as where the note starts it's about thirty-six thousand samples i'd guess by looking at it i think Just that's a, a good guess bit of an estimation there and um, so i'm going to type that in for our sample start at the top here enter and oh whoa hang on a minute bang on that's a good guess. It's almost like you did it before. <laughs> so we've done that for one of them, this selected one here, but we want to do it for everything. So we'll go to this little spanner, not a spanner, it's a cog. To all selected zones, copy current sample start settings. Awesome. And now if we were to look at this or that, they're all in the right place. Assuming we recorded on the grid, which I'm which sure, I'm sure Christian did. We definitely did. Right. So next we're going to add our mod tables. We so are. we have both of our dynamics and we want to make sure that it knows we have two dynamics and that it plays depending on how exactly. hard or soft we hit it. So yeah, the thing that we'd run into is if we're playing at 63 velocities, we'll fire off this sample. Mm -hmm. Velocities, that's not a thing. It would fire off this sample and we'd want, when it goes to 64, it would fire off this one. But mm -hmm. this one's much louder, so we want to make the change between those two different velocity layers as small as possible. And we do that with a velocity mod table. So this is, where, where are we now? We're, we're going down into the editor. Yeah. And we're in amplifier mod, and then you have a velocity mod table. Yeah. Exactly, so okay. yeah, everything under this bit is controlling the volume. Okay. Click that button to show us the table, and then hit active. One thing which is interesting about contact is this defaults to 39.4% intensity. Mm. We don't really want that, we want that 100% intensity. We want it to have complete control. So drag that up and then we're going to right click and make a point at the halfway mark. So that's where the samples meet. Exactly, middle, yeah. Right? So that would okay. be like 64 on this side and 63 okay. velocity on the other side. Make another one and drag it up like that. Um, and we're just going to lift the bottom up a bit as well, because if it was right down there, we'd be modulating it by 0%, so we get 0% volume, which would be silence. Non-ideal. We do work on the edge of silence, though. We so do. Far. So, John Joe here has made his two lines where the samples meet, and he's just putting it to the point where he thinks it's going to work, so it's going to blend. So, obviously, if you have two completely different dynamic ranges, when you hit that middle point, they are going to have to cross over and you're going to hear them quite close together. So what he's trying to do is match the volumes between the bottom layer and the top layer. So if you give it a play, see what it sounds like. So you can see on the screen there's these little red lines in the mapping editor over the blue samples and that's the velocity that John is hitting on the keyboard. Um, and you can see that he's hitting both the quiet samples and the loud samples and it sounds like it's pretty close, it sounds quite smooth. It's pretty close. One thing that's really difficult to work out at this point if there's a good transition because you have to hit either exactly 63 mm. or 64 which I think might be humanly impossible. But what you can do is you can use a little trick 
hidden away here. So if you hit KSP here, this lets us load scripts. And we've got one loaded here called change velocity. To load that, you go to factory, transform, change velocity. Yeah. So what does this do, John Joe? So this will, it basically controls our input velocity and sets its output velocity. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's one to one. So if we hit zero, it gives zero, one, two, seven, if we hit one, two, seven. Yeah. But we can change these values here to modulate what sort of ranges of velocities we're hitting. Okay. We're going to set this to 65. Very carefully. Oh, 64. Even better. And then we set this to 63. And that means that if I play quietly, I'll be playing 63 guaranteed. Actually, it needs to be 65 because it's only the very top one, 64. Right? So all of these ones will be 63. And then the harder velocities will be 64. Yeah, so, so that means that you basically get to hear exactly the either edge side between each yeah. side. Exactly. So it makes it easy to, to hear the difference between the two. Yeah. So let's see how good you're guessing. So the harder ones that you can hear are slightly too quiet. So we're just going to bring up this a little bit so the volume's louder. It sounds pretty close, but it pretty does sound close. like it's quite bright on the louder samples. Exactly, yeah. So I think the best way to sort that out is to put some sort of EQ. Yeah, so we're going to take out those bright sounds, but we're going to modulate it, right? So exactly. That... So we don't want the EQ to constantly be removing all of the high harmonics. Mm. We want it to do it only at this crossover point by a certain amount. So I've, I've gone into the group insert effects, add an EQ, one band EQ will do it. And then, having listened to it, it's kind of that high mids, 3500 hertz range. We don't want it to be too sharp or anything, so we'll keep the bandwidth as wide as possible. Three. Um, and then we're going to modulate it. Yeah. So we hit mod. We want to choose external sources and velocity, so the hardness that we're playing will change it. And then we want it to affect the gain. So we can activate this. And like we did before, we want to create a mod table that has a split point at 50%. So we don't want the EQ on the quiet samples, do we? So we've got this flat line on the left side. Right? Exactly. Okay. One thing to note here is, at the moment, this is going to add this much to the gain. We don't want it to do that. We want it to take no. away those frequencies. So we invert it. Um, and then we don't want it to do anything at all at the highest frequencies. We want it to become less and less as it goes down towards the crossover point. And then below, we probably want to replicate it a bit. So when we get at our very lowest, it's also slightly duller than it mm -hmm. otherwise would have been. Um, so I'll have a listen to that. Slightly overcooked. Bring that down a bit. Not bad. Maybe slightly quiet now on the top samples. But Yeah, reasonable. So everything we're doing here is basically just smoothing over that transition period between the quiet samples and the loud samples. Exactly. So that people can think that you did loads of different dynamics in your, in your library when you only did two. So at the moment we still have this script enabled and it's meaning that we can only play two velocities, 63 or 64, which is a bit annoying. Before we move on, I'm going to turn that off. Cool, just bypass it there and then back to it. And now we should have full range. We can have a bit of a play and see how it feels. To me, I think, I don't know if you agree, Leo, but the this is a bit low here. Yeah. It's a bit soft. So we'll just nudge that back up a bit. Cool. Sounding nice. The only thing is when we s release the note, there's kind of a bit of a jarring... Digital silence. Digital silence, yeah. 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 It makes me feel a bit weird when I breathe. It kind of makes me short of air. Do you know it's what I mean? true silence. <laughs> true silence. 
True silence. But luckily we've recorded some release triggers, right? Yeah. I'm just going to say this, actually. Okay. Top One tip. thing to bear in mind in contact, actually. Mega top tip. Yeah. There's no undo. Yeah. There's no Best undo thing to do there. is save it every second. So we're just going to save it next to where we had our samples. So the next thing we're going to do now is add these release triggers. Uh, so release triggers are recordings of when you lift a note off the piano. Or if you're playing the violin, it's the moment where they stop bowing the note and it basically just creates the real sound of what that sounds like in, in real life but you get to program it into your virtual instrument version yeah of that. exactly so, i think it's important to bear in mind when you're sampling how we perceive a note and how we perceive realism and there's three important bits for recognizing what instrument it is it's the start the middle and the end yeah and if you don't have one of them it sounds really odd. Yeah. Um, so we've got our start, we've got our middle. Let's do the end of the note. So to set that up, we need to make a new group. And Contact has a very hidden way of making new groups. And we do that by clicking on the group editor. And then inside the group editor, there is a button called Create Empty Group. And that will stick a new group underneath the one you are using for your longs. And it's called Empty Group. and we could probably take the time now to rename the groups. Yeah, before we get too confused. Yeah. So we're going to call these the sustains. And this one's going to become releases. Wicked. Cool. So it, within group editor, you can actually use a function called group solo. Yeah. So this, if you have lots of multiple groups uh, and they're all firing off at the same time, like different dynamics or different uh, variations, you can use group solo to just hear the one group that you're selected on. Uh, you can also right click the groups and select edit on the group that you're on. So this is what George is going to do now yeah. to put all the release triggers in. So one thing that is really important and is a regular source of cock-ups here at Spitfire Audio in the our prod dev team, mm -hmm. quite a few expletives shouted across an otherwise silent room, is leaving the edit flags selected. So at the moment I've got sustains and releases both selected. So both. anything you do now will affect both of the exactly. groups. Yeah. So if I was to say, okay, I've got my releases now, I don't need my EQ, I don't need this, I'll delete it all, I accidentally also delete it from my sustain group. Mm. It sounds like you maybe almost did that before we started recording the video. Might have done, not yeah. sure. Okay, cut that one out. <laughs> so releases... <laughs> I'm so not going to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> so the releases, we're going to right click, set edit, edit flag for selected groups, and now we've just got our releases selected. I guess helpfully it's added all of the other sample all of the samples we had in our previous group into this group. But we don't want those. So we'll get rid of those with delete and drag in our release triggers. So same again with these samples, we're gonna put them on the right notes. We're gonna set the note center, same as before. Yep. So an auto map setup. Make high key, apply. Make low key, apply. Close that and then Importantly, set the what's it called the root keys so they're playing back at the right speed to center. And then we've only got one dynamic of release triggers, so we don't need to do any of the weird velocity mapping. No. We can just keep it all top to bottom, and then we can spread them out with this button again. Cool. Then we're going to match the ranges. So A sharp zero. H up minus one at the bottom and C7 at the top. Cool. Cool. And then we want to set the start points of these release triggers. Absolutely. That's very important. So same as before, we're going to check out where those release triggers are in the sample. They're a little bit further along. And we want to cut in a little bit just so that we get bang on the release, the sound we want. Yeah. I think there's... I think there's a bit of a range. I think if we go for, so we're looking at 34,000 at the moment. If we set everything to 34,000, we should be all good. And then we'll copy that to all of our selected zones. Cool. And they're all vaguely in the middle somewhere. So how does that sound now, John Jay? 
Aha. Sounds just like the release triggers. The only problem we're facing at the moment is, at the moment, if I hit the note, I get the release trigger on the note on rather than on the note off. So what we want to do is change release trigger here, and that will make it sound on the note off. Yeah, so when you release the, your, your thumb off the note, you then get the sound, rather than when you directly hit the note. Exactly. Amplifier's been default set to minus six, so we're gonna put that to zero to match our previous group sustains. And then we're gonna add velocity sensitivity so that we don't get any really loud ones when we're playing soft. So now we're adding a velocity mod table. So this is uh, doing the same thing as the one on the longs group, except we've only got one dynamic, so it's just gonna be a straight old line. Exactly. But we, want, we don't want it too loud at the bottom, but we also don't want it completely off, so we're just gonna pull that up a little bit and have a little listen to see if that feels about right. We could probably bring that up a bit, maybe towards there. Cool, sounds natural. Sounds good. So one thing that is a kind of a top tip for release trees, especially with pianos, is uh, adding a release trigger counter. Exactly, yeah. So this is gonna affect the sound or the volume of the release trigger depending on how long you hold the note. Yeah. Yeah, if we weren't to do that and we were to hold a note for a really long time, then we'd get a really loud release trigger and it might sound a bit unnatural. For instance... It's a bit jarring. Yeah, it's quite loud. It's not what would happen on a real piano in real life. Yeah. So we're going to set this to around 8 seconds, or 8,000 milliseconds. And then create a mod table using external source release trigger counter. So if we activate that, we can see the longer that we hold it, the further along the white line will be on this line. So if I do a short one, it's only there, but if I do a long one, it's further along. At the moment, it's just a bit too low, so we're going to bring up the bottom as well um, and then just give it a bit of a curve so that it gradually gets quieter and quieter the longer you hold it. And that sounds like this. It's a very nice chords, John Joe. Thanks, mate. Major six. Yeah. Cool. So that's pretty much it, really. We've got a whole, a whole piano. Thanks so much. Well, I think that, uh, uh, that's just, I mean, it's absolute gold dust, that. So, but I think that maybe what we could do is, like, in a part two, is discuss things like um, the mapping, how if I were to approach it from just having the root key in and mapping them down. So at the moment, it's the root key and it's mapping both ways. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. So that'd be something to talk about. But also this ongoing debate about the fact that release triggers don't release on the sustain pedal, they release like that when yeah. you've got the suspect. That's a slightly more complicated mm -hmm. yeah. thing that we should talk about maybe another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But thanks ever so much, it's absolutely brilliant. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Amazing creative insights from John, Joe and Leo there. Thanks guys so much for that. It'd be interesting for you to download that version of the library, compare it to other versions, the EXS and stuff, and um, feedback in the comments down below. The thing I did forget to do was save their contact instruments. So what I've actually done, hope you're proud of me, is rebuild it up here in Scotland for you to try. So it's linked, the page to the spring pianos are linked below. Very much like to know your opinions of the difference between the EXS24, the contact version that um, Leo and John Joe made, and the contact version that's already up there, which have been approached all slightly differently. I'm gonna move on to the air piano I promise next week where I've also got something absolutely mind-bending to show you absolutely amazing piano related this is just a bit a bit of a shout out to uh, the the site pianobook.co.uk there's been loads of new submissions up on there so get yourself along there to download some new pianos some new instruments including fantastic monthly highlights which round up new submissions interesting things that have been discussed on the forum etc etc also I've made a page about the Rusty Gates thing with all of the YouTube videos that were submitted on that single page. So it's great just to see this mosaic of effort, but also so you can have a rummage round and see how other people 
get up to sampling business. Really desperate for uh, as many demos as possible to go on the SoundCloud page. There's instructions in the video description below of how to submit those on SoundCloud so we can then populate Pianobook's site with demos. They're really important so people don't feel they just have to download everything when they get to Pianobook, so they have a sense of what the piano sounds like. And do bear in mind that because I speak to them, there are several, if not many, A-listers who are members of this community too. So they will be listening to the pianos by listening to your demos. And all I can say is you never know. Anyway, thanks as always for watching. I hope what Leo and John Joe uh, have done today is, is, is useful for you. It certainly is for me. I've made my first contact instrument and it's there to download for you to inspect with your own sampling vigor. So it would be churlish not to subscribe if you haven't done already and ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time we put a video up. As I say, the next piano book is going to go like that. One of those for John Joe and Leo would be much appreciated. Thanks ever so much for watching. See you next time.